For Krima Media's Policy, I'm Sane Lamini. Joining me today is researcher and political analyst Professor Raymond Sadna to discuss his column titled, Let's Call ANC State Criminality What It Is, Treason. Welcome, Professor. Thank you. So, Professor, is it not a bit over the top now to accuse the ruling party, the African National Congress, and state of treason? What does moral treason mean? Well, I'm not making a legal argument um, because uh, treason legally is against the state, basically. But I wanted to make a point that the extent of criminality that is being practiced in South Africa at the hands of the state, through police, through stealing, through a whole lot of other things, and not being punished is on a very high scale. And one, uh, because it is the state, you can't charge them with treason in the conventional way. But I wanted to find a word that conveyed the gravity of what was going on. And that is why I said, morally, it is the equivalent of treason. I'm not saying they must change the law, uh, but we've got a situation of crisis in the country when these things are happening and hardly any of the people who were fingered by the Zondo Commission and in a number of other inquiries have faced charges or gone to jail and they, some of them who've got money or can get access money are spinning out court cases, so it takes a very long time. So that's why I used the word, and I think it's correct. It's brought me a bit more into fashion. So a lot of people want to speak to me suddenly, but uh, so a lot of people like that, but uh, no one has said to be outraged so far as far as I can make out. Mm. And Raymond, uh, you also speak now of the ANC having betrayed what it stood for, and that you are also saying Abashali embraces those very values that uh, the ANC also uh, used to preach. Is that not an exaggeration, though? Well, it's not an exaggeration to say the ANC doesn't practice the values that are in its constitution, the values that many of us join the organization for, because uh, what's happening now, you have water cannons sprayed on queues of people uh, queuing up for grants, some of them in wheelchairs, you have people not getting their grants, you've got people starving, you've got uh, money for flood relief being stolen by the people who are distribute, distributing the care. I mean, it's unbelievable. And the Premier has water diverted to his private home. But with regard to Abakhali, it's a, it's a small organization, although 100,000, it's the, probably the biggest popular organization in the country. But its values are more or less the same as that of the ANC, except that it focuses on land for the landless, land for the poor, and shack dwellers. And it's got food uh, programs, it's got uh, educational programs, a number of things. And I think it's quite impressive and it's doing what the ANC is supposed to do in a, on a small scale because it's not a state. But I mean, uh, the gift of the givers do what the state is supposed to do on a big scale in a few places. But Abakhali does it in a small way with a lot of police harassment. You also now argue, uh, following Abashali Basem Jondolo's statements, that uh, the police in Cato Manor in Devon are defeating the ends of justice in the way they relate to attacks on Abashali. If that is true, Professor, how do they get away with it? Well, you know, it's been reported to the Minister of Police, it's been reported to the South African Human Rights Commission, People have approached other police authorities and they have not had uh, adequate remedies. Um, although there have been 23 murders and only two people have been charged and convicted. But that I don't want to suggest thereby that 
every policeman is a scoundrel who is not doing his or her job because there are some police who are doing their job in a diligent way. And I think it's very important that we know that. But if the Minister of Police is not replying to messages from the president of Abakhali, Sbu Zigode, and he previously, they did have communications. Why is this? How can this be? Has he not got some accountability, especially when there have been murders? And there's been two recent murders. So that's why I think they're getting away with it, because they are not being held accountable by the authorities whose job it is to do that. Now, someone like Becky Trele is a very macho guy. And he may say to me, how you, can you tell me what my job is? Uh, but he, he's not doing his job. And lastly, you also argue that the condition of the ANC's continued existence is that leading figures are seldom punished uh, for crimes they commit. Is that not an overstatement, Professor? Well, you know, I got that from a very interesting article by Susan Boyson, where she argues that there are a number of people in the cabinet or who are close allies of the president who ought to be removed because of the allegations against them, which are very serious. Mantashe in regard to Borsasa and a num number of others who, whose names I can't rattle off. But she says that even the ones who are not his allies, if those people, some of them are put on trial, they may spill the beans on others who are allies of Ramaphosa. And then the whole leadership is going to disintegrate because there's hardly anyone who isn't um, in some way blemished through the Zuma period, through association with Posasa or Guptas, and all of that. So she says the condition for the continued presidency of Ramaphosa and maybe for the continuation of the ANC as an organization is that it gives turns a blind eye to some of these things, or that Ramaphosa can't get rid of them because otherwise he will fall. But what I think I said in that article, if I remember correctly, is that the presidency of Ramaphosa is not the state's question. That's his personal thing. Our interest is that we have clean government and that our taxes are not stolen and what is meant for everyone and especially the poor must go to the poor. Whether whoever's elected is a separate matter, it's not our primary concern. That was a researcher and political analyst, Professor Raymond Satna, speaking to Krima Media's quality about let's call ANC state criminality what it is, treason.